What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to a new video. And today I want to show you how to mine Bitcoins in 2018 and how to set up a Bitcoin miner. But no worries, Bitcoin is not the reason why GPU prices are so high right now. There are other coins because in 2018, you don't mine Bitcoins with your GPU or CPU, you mine them with so-called ASIC miners. So today in this video, I'll show you how to set it up and if you can make a profit out of them. So let's go. In the early days of Bitcoin, it was possible to mine Bitcoins with the CPU or GPU. But nowadays, the difficulty is so high that CPUs and GPUs are simply too slow. Now that's where ASIC miners come into the game. These so-called application-specific integrated circuit miners are able to solve the Bitcoin algorithm with the highest efficiency possible. In this video, we're using the latest Avalon miner A21 from Canand.io and there's a link to our web shop down below in the description. So to get started, you need a miner, a power supply, and a controller which controls the miner and tells him exactly what to do. The controller is basically the brain of the miner and it needs to be configured first. The controller needs to be configured over Ethernet because it's not possible to do this over HDMI or USB. So grab your controller and connect it directly with an Ethernet cable to your laptop or computer. Now also make sure that the controller gets the power from a Raspberry Pi certified power supply. A common issue we have experienced when the controller is not booting is that the power supply is simply too weak. Now make sure that your computer's Ethernet adapter has a 192.168.0.x IP range. Replace the X here with any number between 0 and 255. You can find that in the network settings on your computer. After that is done, go to your favorite web browser and type in the standard IP of the controller, which is 192.168.0.100. So then you should see the Avalon Miner interface. If you're connecting for the first time, then you can log in without a password, so keep it blank. Now the dashboard is really simple. It shows your mining speed and gives you an overview over your miners. So go to the configuration and enter your pool details. You will find them on the pool website of your choice. So usually you can find that under the instructions. I'm personally using slush pool or simply the bitcoin.com pool. Now this requires entering the pool IP, the worker name, which is usually your account name and a given password. The controller is set by default to static IP. So this only works if your network has the same IP range. So also a 192.168.0x IP range. To find out which IP your network is using, simply connect to your network, then open CMD on your computer and type in ipconfig slash all. This gives you an overview over your network adapters and there you can see which IP range is used on your home network. If the IP is different, you should probably switch your controller to DHCP so it gets the IP from your router. But remember, you won't be able to connect to the miner afterwards by connecting it to your PC. Also, if you're already familiar with networks, you can give your miner any IP within the subnet of your home network. And also don't forget to enter the correct gateway IP. So that is the basic configuration. Under the advanced version, you can set a root password restart the miner, adjust the frequency or even configure Wi-Fi, but actually we don't recommend to change any settings if you don't have a clue what you're doing. If you already know how to do it, then this will be pretty easy to do. So once the controller is configured, all you have to do is unplug it and hook it up to your miner. The miner has all the connectors on the backside. Inside of the package, you will find an AUC3 cable and an AUC3 adapter. Now connect the AUC3 cable to the left port of the miner and the other end to the AUC3 adapter. Now on the opposite side of the AUC3 adapter, you will find a micro USB port. So now simply connect the micro USB cable to the adapter and the USB end to the controller. Further, you will also need to hook up your miner to a power supply. So make sure you're using an original power supply or any server grade PSU that can deliver enough power. The connectors are basic PCIe 6-pin connectors. So now you should have your controller connected to the power and ethernet and your miner connected to the AUC3 cable and adapter which is connected to the controller, plus a power source which is connected to the miner and your wall socket. 
so time to switch it on. And if everything is configured properly, the miner should start hashing directly after a quick fan test. You will see that the AUC3 adapter LED switches from red to green and the miner lights up in blue on the back. So if this is not working, log in to your controller and check the CG miner log. So usually the problem is a wrong configured pool or your network settings are incorrect and the miner can't connect to the network. My suggestion is to have a look at bitcointalk.org and I'm pretty sure that you will find a solution for your problem. But now, let me show you how loud these miners really are. So guys, once they are up and running, it will actually look like this. And as you can hear, they're actually pretty loud, so you should definitely keep them in a room where you don't care about the noise, but it's pretty good because I have to heat the whole room here and also there at the back and the miners are actually heating up the whole room. So we have here like 25 degrees. Alright, so I'll quickly switch them off and there we go. So basically when the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, you should also see that the Ethernet LEDs are looking like this, so orange and green. And it's configured properly, so it's connected to my Wi-Fi repeater right over here. Then you just have to switch on the miners. There you go. So now they spin up and the status LED will change to blue very soon. And the AUC3 adapter will have a few bad shares, so blink red and then it will turn to solid green. And that means the mine is up and running and as you can hear now the fans are spinning with constant speed so that looks quite good mine is up and running you can now log in back to the controller check out the status and also log into your pool and check out the performance of the miners so all in all you don't have to do anything you don't have to do any maintenance just clean them from time to time maybe once a month and you're good to go so once everything is configured, it's really just plug and play, keep it connected to the internet, keep the power connected, and you will have no issues with the devices. All right guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and I hope it was kind of helpful, but now you will ask yourself, why should I buy a Bitcoin miner? Because it's expensive, it's noisy, and it consumes a lot of power. Well, you can definitely make a profit if you have actually access to cheap energy and if you don't care about the noise and maybe if you can even use the excessive heat out of these devices, which I do to heat my upper rooms. Well, um, I don't have the cheapest energy plan in Austria, but I can still make a profit. It really depends on how much you pay for the hardware. Hardware prices for ASIC miners are totally sick right now because well, it depends a little bit on the BTC value. BTC was skyrocketing to 20,000 USD before Christmas. So also the ASIC manufacturers have really raised their prices. And they don't go down with their prices right now, just a little bit. So ASIC machines are still very expensive. Now, if you have access to very cheap energy, you still make a profit. And these are actually industrial machines, so they are not really for home use. We have some solutions to make them less noisy, but to be honest, I wouldn't have that machine in my living room. So as I've told you, you can make profits. I'll show you in the next video exactly how much I make. I have two miners at home, actually four miners at home, a few other miners in a different location where the energy is cheaper, and yes, you can make profit. I know the system sounds kind of weird, it consumes way too much energy for what you get, the system has a lot of problems right now, but I'm pretty sure that the blockchain is here to stay, I'm pretty sure that in the future we'll have improvements on the whole system, it will go away from that. I can make a quick profit from all those facts who are driving up the prices. And I'm pretty sure in the future, Bitcoin will be here to stay or at least any other coin. So, well, that was a quick guide on ASIC miners. That was how to set them up. It was how you can make a profit out of them. But as I've told you, it depends on the price of energy, hardware and the PTC value. And there's several calculators. You can find them 
down below in the description. If you have any questions about how mining works, where to get the hardware, blah blah blah, write a comment down below in the description, uh, down below in the comments, and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. Also, there are a few links in the description where to get the miners and some more additional information. Feel free to check them out. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day.